Coming up on today's Locked On Senators, it's a very special game day. We're in Ottawa for Chris Neal Jersey Retirement Night. The Sens hosting the Chicago Blackhawks. No player will ever wear number 25 as an Ottawa Senator again after tonight. We're going to get into some of our favorite Chris Neal memories and a full game day preview. And it's brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. With our official sportsbook being FanDuel, head to FanDuel.com slash locked on and get started today. You can make every moment more at FanDuel. This is the Locked On Senators podcast. Your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. Welcome inside episode 738 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan from the nation's capital, right beside Brandon Pillar. What's up, brother? Let's We're go. here for... Chris Neal Jersey retirement, and we cannot wait to celebrate this afternoon and this evening with 18,500 plus of our best friends. I mean, Ross, I can't believe this day is finally here. Like we, we had this game circled on our calendars probably since the day they announced it, right? Because you had been to the Daniel Alfredson retirement game and the Chris Phillips retirement game. You missed Frank Finnegan's. Ah. No, no disrespect to number eight. We, we respect Frank Finnegan, but you're not going to miss number 25 because we got tickets. We got our live show coming up tomorrow at the Glebe Central Pub, our first ever live show. Make sure you have your tickets because it's going to be packed. Well, hopefully you let people know that it's Friday. I was wondering, we should have taken bets and hopefully some of you did out there. How long until we would say tomorrow? Did I already mess it up? Okay. The live show Friday, Friday, Friday. <laughs> That's the way to be safe. Friday, just day of the week, Friday. We'll be at the Glebe Central Pub. Join us anytime after three. Live show starts at four. The shuttle leaves at five. And then a second shuttle is leaving at 530. Yes, we have sold over 100 tickets for this event. And the Glebe Central Cup pub capacity is 115. So we're going to have standing room only. It'll be a ton of fun. <laughs> head there early. Head there. Have some fun. I, I heard they have a ski shot. You know those? That's interesting. That could get uh, things going a little quickly, eh? I'd like to have some fun with that. But we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later on. Chris Neal is the story of the day. The live show is great. The shuttle's even better. But nothing beats Chris Neal yes. getting his number 25 retired. When someone who cheers for another team or maybe doesn't know the history of the Ottawa Senators looks at the stats and say, why are you retiring Chris Neal's number? What's your response to them? This isn't for you. If you're not an Ottawa Senators fan, then you probably don't understand why Chris Neal is so special to this team. And that's fine. But keep your mouth shut. We don't need to hear any disrespect to number 25 because the Flesherton native is an absolute legend in Ottawa. Played his whole career there. Was never suspended. I'll remind you, Ross. He's come close, but always towed the line. That's what we loved. But it's just the fact that if you were a Sens fan while Chris Neal was around... You felt his impact. And I mean, the best the best way, I don't know if we want to get into our favorite Chris Neal memories right off the bat. The best way to describe that for me was how he ended his time in Ottawa. He wasn't playing very much, but the Sens were getting bullied. They had what was called a Tanner Glass problem. You know what the solution to a Tanner Glass problem was? 25. A couple minutes of number 25 on the ice, Ross. I was getting nostalgic today while I was waiting for you in the airport. I was watching Chris Neal highlights. And that when he goes after Tanner Glass, he doesn't Tanner Glass doesn't want to fight him. And Neal just grabs his helmet and rips it off and just feeds him a couple. Now, it did negate a power play, which you could argue uh, isn't always the best <laughs> thing to do in a playoff game. But the message was sent, and Tanner Glass definitely felt Chris Neal's presence. And you ask anyone on that team, they've talked about it, players from that uh, playoff run. It had a big impact having Chris Neal back. You just you feel bigger on the ice when you've got a player like Chris Neal that's going to have your back at any given moment. Pierre Dorian brought up that exact time in Sens history just the uh, just yesterday when he spoke to the media, and we'll get into that discussion. What he said 
outside of Chris Neal when talking about the trade deadline. That's all coming up. But Chris Neal played 1,026 NHL games for the Ottawa Senators. 1,026. Wow. Third all-time in games played behind Chris Phillips and Daniel Alfredson. That's the two guys he joins up in the rafters. He had 112 goals, 250 points, but... The main number that just jumps off the page is 2,522 <laughs> penalty minutes. Just impeccable. As uh, a nose for the net, we know he did have that at times. Yep. Played the power play on some pretty good teams, standing right in front of the net, but also knew how to find the way to the penalty box as well. But just a an amazing player who, in terms of standing up for his teammates and he gave some guys some welcome to the NHL moments. I saw our guy, Creature, Graham Creech, wrote uh, today on Twitter because he was at the rink. They have their TSN booth right there. And he said, right behind the net, it says 25. Well, he did some damage right behind the nets at the CTC. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, Ross, they should they should name the home penalty box at the CTC, the, the Chris Neal suite or something like that. Like they that. name <laughs> press boxes? You always see yeah, that? Exactly. It's the Chris Neal suite, the home penalty box. Um, and I think... When you start listing off those stats, Ross, yes, people that aren't Senators fans are going to say, well, that's not very many goals, it's not very many assists, blah, blah, blah. But I think that just goes to show you how good he was as a role in an enforcer. How many enforcers played over 1,000 games and over 1,000 games with the same team? Not many. It doesn't happen very often. So, yes, he was not a prolific goal scorer or what? anything like that, but he did his job Better than anyone, like arguably, right? So I think that's where it's it's so fun to have a guy like him always be honored. And uh, like we mentioned, even if you didn't retire Chris Neal's number 25, no one is wanting to wear that as an Ottawa Senator because you better live up to expectations if you're wearing number 25. He fought Ty Domi five times. And yeah. You can go on YouTube and it says Domi versus Neal round five. These he, he was not afraid. He gave up height in almost every single fight. Fanchara. Well, that's the one that jumps out of the page as being like, are you serious? And Ross, I rewatched that fight. He he pulls the iconic. Remember when Chara had, on the, on the had yeah. Le Cavalier like that? He pulls that on Chara. So that's just epic. And just a quick aside. You mentioned he fights Ty Domi uh, all those times. Well, wouldn't you know it? Max Domi. We'll be playing in this game up against the Ottawa Center. So that's a that's a funny little tie in there. Very interesting. I like that. Chris Neal, so many fights. Who do you think his first NHL fight was against? I have no clue. I got no clue. Well, Gino Ojek, who unfortunately just passed away, but a tough guy yeah. in NHL history. Well, his third fight was against Bill Guerin. His <laughs> okay. seventh, eighth, and ninth fights all against Ty Domi, back to back to back, <laughs> and then he fought uh, Darcy Tucker, and then right back to Domi again. Oh, Those guys just threw it. But if you want to talk about Chris Neal, you can't talk about him without mentioning that he scored the first home goal in the Stanley Cup Finals for the Ottawa Senators franchise. True. I, I didn't remember that, but you were there for that. Game three, he yeah. scored the opening goal for Ottawa. I think they were down. Was it one or two? Nothing. I've got the I've got the goal pulled up to show you here, Pilsy, uh, later. But it was one nothing for Anaheim at the time. Let's walk our way through it if you're watching on YouTube. Chris Kelly takes it out front, just whips it, and there's Chris Neal. The place went absolutely bananas. Look at that line. It's Jason Spets out with a fourth line shift with Neal. <laughs> With Neil and uh, and Chris Kelly, don't call me Parker. And then uh, here, Mazaros is out there. Here comes Andre Mazaros yep. in there too. Amazing. I mean, Chris Neal is absolutely fired up after scoring that goal. And I mean, uh, why wouldn't you be? And exactly, like Chris Neal is a part of all these big Ottawa Senators moments. Here he is scoring a goal in the Stanley Cup Finals at home. Amazing. Just a, a truly, a like they say, guys, guys. Like he's a team's team guy. Yeah. That's just like, there's no bigger compliment than that. You don't stay over a thousand games being that type of player that in terms of pure talent, you could say, especially at the end, he scored one goal in 50 games his last year. He was certainly there for other reasons, yes. but you have to, to be able to be that type of impact player and have a 16 goal campaign at one point. And Not I know that deal. was years before, but you look at just the, the level of compete that he brought. I love this quote from Pierre Dorian. We're going to get to more Pierre Dorian right after this. 
He said that he his work ethic allowed him to sweet, squeeze every inch of potential out of his career. And that's what it was all about. And I mean, he did everything he could to stay on this team and play his role for as long as he did. And that's the thing. I, I can't wait to hear from uh, players and teammates of his that are going to talk about him on this night. Who do you think is going to be there? Do you think we could get like some some like surprise guests? Or just the usual suspects. You got you got to think Jason Spetz is going to be there. I think so. I know he's uh, Mr. Toronto Maple Leaf these days, but you got to think because he came to uh, Phillips night, didn't he? Or I think so. well, no, he, he got he, permission Al- to go to some sort of Sens event. I forget. It was what the it was. Hall of Fame for okay, Alfie. Yes, that's what it was. Yeah. So I mean, he was on the ice with Chris Neal in that goal. Hell, so. Dubas is probably going to come. Big Sens fan. <laughs> yeah, he'll have the 25 jersey on. That'll be one of my clicks, Ross, yes. for Chris Neal jersey. Yes. Someone bring me a clicker. Don't forget that. Someone bring Pilsy a clicker. We're going to get into the Glebe Central Pub. We're going to get into Pierre Dorian's comments. But, Pilsy, I'm not done talking about Chris Neal because I, I hope and I, everyone who's coming on Glebe Central Pub for the live show, I want to hear your Chris Neal stories as well. But there's a few hits, and we mentioned that zone behind the net. The one on Victor Hedman stands out to me in 2010. That was Victor Hedman's first year in the league. He's 6'6", 230. Yeah. And I don't care how young he is. Chris Neal's not even six feet tall. For him to just absolutely... It looked like Hedman was in a seated position the whole way down. (laughs) He got thumped. And Neal was was able to catch guys in, in these... And maybe you say it and you're like, oh, maybe you shouldn't be catching guys in vulnerable positions. But the way the game was played back then, was that was say. all all expected. And yes. it's it's a skill to do that. You have to be able to read the game and where the play is coming from, where it's going to well, be. And especially, Ross, if you miss lining up a hit like that, not only have you taken yourself out of the play, but it's, it's a bad look. <laughs> so you got to make sure you're lining those up and you're hitting them. As I hit the ad, Pilsy, I want everyone to think about this. And I want your response afterwards. I think we brought it up briefly at the end of yesterday's pod, but I really am curious. One, what the reaction would be if someone does the two arm after the fight salute. If you're watching on YouTube, but not like I have to show you, it's just the iconic Chris Neal. Who is most likely to do that? And how loud would the building be if it's the captain, Brady Kachuk? That's all coming up. You are listening to Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Built Bar, Ross. I had a six-hour drive today, and I don't know if anyone's done the back route drive that I did, but the key to that is I brought some Built Bars with me to keep me fueled. The thing I love about Built Bar, Ross, is they find a way to make their bars taste good, then we'll try to make it healthy. And a perfect example of that is the Built Puffs, covered in 100% chocolate. All their bars are. But the Puffs have marshmallow in there as well. And you may be thinking, well, marshmallow and chocolate. I don't know, Pillsy. That's not healthy to me. Well, it's protein-infused marshmallows. Yes, that's the Built Bar way. I love the Puffs. Anything with brownies, coconut, caramel, or cookie dough all gets my vote of confidence. But don't just take my word for it. Head to built.com yourself. And if you've never tried them, we recommend you get the mixed pack because you can try so many different flavors. And to sweeten the deal, we're going to use promo code locked on 15 for 15% off your next order. Guys, built bars are low in calorie, low in sugar, but high in protein and high in fiber. Once more, go to built.com, use promo code locked on 15 for 15% off your next order. It's Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. All right, it is Friday, February 17th. You are locked on Senators. It's your team. Every day for more daily content, you can follow us on Twitter at Send Central. We also have daily podcasts wherever you get yours. It's rare we're in the same room, but I absolutely love the vibe. And how can you not? The Sens have won six of seven right now and are increasing their games in hand. I don't want to say they've done anything because they need to do their part before we even talk about the P word. Mm-hmm. But they're playing against a extremely bad game, but a team we're going to talk about the Chicago Blackhawks and just what is 
their MO tonight. As we know, management's hoping for more prospects, potentially a Connor Bedard, but there's, there's still a couple talented players. We'll get into that preview afterwards. Pilsy, is Brady Kachuk most likely to be the guy who does the Chris Neal Selly? Yeah, he's definitely most likely to be the guy, and he's the guy you want to do it, right? Like, he's the guy that can bring that emotion. Uh, he's leading the team in points, something that Chris Neal n- never really uh, flirted with, but he's also the kind of guy that, like, he, Brady Kachuk also doesn't do staged fights. Like, if he's fighting, you know there's some passion behind it, and Chris Neal probably had a couple staged fights in his day, as that was the era of hockey uh, back then, but the passion was always there, so... I think it should be Brady Kachuk. I mentioned it on last episode, though, Ross. I really wish they would bring Mark Kasselik up for this game. I feel like that's a that's a better kind of sweet spot to have it because unless there's a reason for Brady Kachuk to fight, I'd like to keep the the captain and the player with the most points on this team on the ice as much as possible. Especially when you think about Chicago. They don't really have any Brady Kachuk-esque combatants. It's not like... Let's say even Jacob Truba, like he plays a lot of minutes with the Rangers where you're taking off a guy who's in the same echelon of yep. ice time for the other team. It's not like a Jamie Ben is another example or a tough guy around the league. You're looking at probably someone who Brady's better on the ice and have that guy just as a sleeping giant out there. But how about, I mean, it sucks because the guy who you want, like Boro would be up there. Like yeah, guys who actually yeah. played with Chris Neal, right? Had yeah. had that like how about a Mark Mathod? Like I was gonna throw that in there. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say that that would be great. Although uh, Mark did tell tell uh, you when you guys were talking, that wasn't his forte. No, it wasn't at all. Can't uh, blame him. Honorable mention, Claude Giroux. I don't think he'll fight. But it, <laughs> could you imagine a Claude Giroux at no. home? But at home in Ottawa, you know, like he's. He was probably a fan at the start of Chris Neal's career. He would have been going to games as a kid with with Chris Neal in the ring. Yeah, p- possibly. Uh, I want it on record. I do not want Claude Giroux fighting in this game. Come on. Sorry. You stink. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't say that because now people are gonna be like, they're sitting next to each other. something going on? I've been in the car for a while, so I might. Uh, <laughs> the, the socks probably aren't great. Um, all right. So let's talk about Pierre Dorian's comments today. What stood out most to you? He talked a lot about Chris Neal, but also a couple nuggets when it comes to trade deadline. Ross, what stood out to me is... Pierre Dorian was in a silly, goofy mood. Like, sometimes you just get Pierre Dorian pressers where he's locked and loaded and he is saying some random stuff. Like, talk, I think you're going to go into this, but... No, the, what was your favorite aside? The one where he's talking about uh, the Edmonton Oilers being similar to the Russian 72 All-Star team. No, no, he said if the Sens were the 72 All-Star Soviets they would still lose to the Edmonton Oilers. Either way he phrased it, that reference was just wild. I mean, I'm not particularly familiar with uh, the 72 Russian All-Stars personally, but that was a wild reference. And then uh, he definitely, Pierre Dorian had this one loaded. He probably told it to his girlfriend the night before and she laughed. But when they asked about an Alex Dabrinkat extension, and he says, I might be trying to buy a Chipotle franchise to keep him here. Some crickets from the press, uh, from the press, but they got it, and he got a couple Snickers. But uh, yeah, this was just uh, a goofy Pierre Dorian. But you know what? That's 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 fun. It's fun. It it certainly leaves a smile on your face. <laughs> uh, watch out for Victor Tikhanov this weekend <laughs> from the '72 Soviets. Watch. That's probably not even the right vintage, but yeah, hilarious lines you. there from Pierre Dorian. Also, I thought it was pretty funny when uh, he's talking about Mando and Mads making the start, and he goes. When I say Mando's matured, he's matured. <laughs> like in the last two weeks. Like, yeah. like from when he went down to the minor. It's like, no, just you were on your fourth goalie and you well, played it, well. Ross, it wasn't that long ago he was playing for the Allen Americans. And now he's starting in a crucial game in the NHL, his NHL debut up against the New York Islanders. So, yeah, we, we've gushed over Mando a lot. And uh, if you guys love the Mando story, you got to check out yesterday's episode with Luciano Mendolesi as he was – an absolute delight to hear uh, a goalie dad talk about an incredible moment watching your son play his first NHL game. What else did Pierre Dorian say? I'm just trying to think back at all. like Because it's always like a throwaway line here or there, but you're like, well, what? Well, the Chris Neal line was, uh, he was mentioning, if there ever was a war, I'd want Chris Neal with me, which I mean, hey, fair. <laughs> Three war references, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wild. He also said Travis Hamannick in all likelihood 
will not be traded. Uh, Derek Broussard will play his thousandth game as a member of the Ottawa Senators. I love that. I that's love before that. the trade deadline, yeah. though. Barely. So we'll see. If a team, that's one of those guys where it's like, you go to him and you say, look, do you want to go or not? And then if so, you put the feelers out there. And if it works, it works. You can go play for a 20th team. And you, and you send him to somewhere he wants to go and you don't care about the return. I, yeah. I feel like that's that kind of situation. Right? But if he doesn't want to get traded, then you have to let him know, hey, there's a strong likelihood that you're a healthy scratch down the stretch. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, uh, like uh, they mentioned at the start of the year, Derek Broussard came in on a PTO, and they were very clear what his role could be. And if you're Derek Broussard, you got to be pretty stoked with what your role ended up being. He was a yeah. second-line center for weeks yeah. when he was brought in on a PTO and expected to play on the wing on the fourth line. So he certainly has had opportunities in Ottawa, and I, th- I think Ottawa holds a, a special spot in his heart, so I don't think he's too worried. Last note on Pierre Dorian, I tweeted this out at Send Central. Find someone you love the way that Pierre Dorian loves Tim Stutzla. How about the way he lit up talking about his young superstar? He goes, every time I see him, it puts a smile on my face. I mean, Ross, I would hope it puts a smile on his face. He gave Tim Stutzla the richest contract in franchise history. So you better hope you like the guy. Hugs and high fives, I bet, for Pierre Dorian after that one. Pierre's going to be proud today. He mentioned he's super proud as GM of this team on the day that Chris Neal's jersey is getting retired. Pilsy, the Sens are one and one when retiring jerseys. They lost to the Detroit Red Wings in January of 2016 when Daniel Alfredson oh, had his number 11 that retired. That hurts extra up against the Red Wings. It hurt oh. so bad. I was at the game. I'm going to pull up the exact scores of that game and the game where they retired Chris Phillips Jersey. That was a barn burner. They scored the fastest four goals in yep. franchise history. I remember. Yeah. So what do they have on tap for us tomorrow? We'll discuss that next. You're listening to locked on senators. You are listening to the locked on senators podcast today. It's presented by the Glebe Central Pub. Glebe Central Pub is your home in the heart of the Glebe. Great food, tasty drinks, and an amazing atmosphere. And we are going to Glebe Central Pub. Likely, when you're listening to this, we're on our way there. We're fired up. Here's the breakdown. 3 p.m. arrival. Whenever you want after 3 p.m. We're going to be there a touch earlier, but come 3 p.m. 4 p.m. live show. So we're going to be mingling, having a good time, getting to chat with some of our uh, classic citizens. If you're new, come on out. Love to introduce yourself and it will introduce ourselves to you at 3 to 4 p.m. 4 p.m. live show. Live show, very interactive. Giveaways. We've got, oh my God. Dude, should we tell them what Gleep Central Pub is giving away? We have to. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. So sick. Like, I think even if I wasn't coming to the game, I would go to the Gleep Central Pub before just to go have a chance to win these. Yep. Uh, Dave just po- pulled this up. You'd be the coolest guy in beer league, right? I mean, or on the ODR. Guinness. So it's Friday, which means it's Guinness Friday at the Glebe Central Pub. We have a pair of black and white Guinness gloves That's to give so away. Awesome. The value's at $300 is what they're saying. I think the these would make you the absolute coolest person on the ODR. There's no, no doubt. Well, that and you could be wearing Send Central merch. That Whoa. you also received at this night because we're giving away what? some Sen Central merch as well. Oh my God. And two tickets for Sunday's game against the St. Louis Blues. Are you kidding me? Ooh. Right now, it's all thanks to Glebe Central Pub. We'll see you today at the Glebe Central Pub. Check them out in the heart of the Glebe, 779 Bank Street, and make sure you let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. All right. Game day. Sends of one, six of seven. Coming off a huge 3-2 shootout win over the New York Islanders. If you're still buzzing off the Kevin Mandelazy win, go check out our conversation with his old man. Great, great Jack. Goalie dads, eh? Yeah. Beauties. Absolute beauties. So it sends game day. They're playing against a team that stinks, right? Like, let's just be clear about the Chicago Blackhawks. This is a team that's not very good. At hockey. I mean, they're literally the second worst team in the league. Uh, Only the Columbus Blue Jackets are worse. And the Toronto Maple Leafs were able to score on them in nine seconds in the last game. Like, it was... 
it was a fast, uh, fast lead for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And uh, Ross, if we'll lead into that, I'm going to go with my key to victory is get the lead early because if they're able to score in nine seconds, the CTC's roof is going to blow off the building and you're going to build off that momentum. So do not allow the Blackhawks to sneak a a greasy goal past you and kind of dull down this full house because I think if they get one, if the Sens get one and they start with the lead, there's going to be no looking back from there. So that is my key to victory. Get the lead early. Pillsy, last time we saw this team play in person, they scored one minute and four seconds in. Yeah. It was Claude Giroux assisted by Alex Dabrinkit and Josh Norris. But with Alex Dabrinkit, that was his first home point as a senator. And now he's playing his old team for the first True. time at home. Revenge so, game. Yep. Revenge game for Alex Dabrinkit. And that's another note that we forgot to mention. Pierre Dorian's, he had a side. He brought it up. Alex Dabrinkit will not be traded. And, I mean, that's just if you needed confirmation. I mean, there's no Uh, chance they were going to trade Alex Dabrinkit if you thought they were. I don't know. But (laughs) let's go with Alex Dabrinkit's career stats because he's my locked-on player in tonight's game. You look at his career numbers against every single team in the league, Pilsy. Let's see. Has, Has he done it? Yes, he has. Alex Dabrinkit has scored against 31 of the NHL's 32 teams. Even Seattle? Even Seattle. Okay. Alex Dabrinkit has one goal in four career games against Seattle. You know what team he's never scored against? The Chicago Blackhawks. The team he's never played against. The (laughs) Chicago Blackhawks. So my locked on player and my lock of the night at FanDuel is anytime goal scorer, Alex to brink it. I think he's going to come through. He feels good after that. He he had that big goal at home on Monday that brought this game to overtime. They end up winning in a shootout on Monday against Calgary. I think he's going to come back on vengeance against his old team that gave up on a 24 year old two time 40 goal score. I'm locked on Alex to bring it tonight. Yeah, and Ross, there's probably some money on the board for uh, the cat as well. So there's going to be extra motivation there. I love that pick. That's something I kind of glanced over. So good job bringing that up. I'm going to go with Brady Kachuk as my locked on player because I'm going to be locked on to him to see if he's going to be getting in a, in a scrap and doing the Chris Neal uh, two hand wave. So next number retired after Neal? Possibly, possibly. I mean, there's. There's some Ring of Honor jersey retirement uh, things going on. Maybe here. Monday we talk. We don't want to overshadow Chris Neal, but I think there exactly. is a conversation to be had on Craig Anderson and Eric Carlson would be the two eventually. Especially if Carl comes back. I mean, if Carl comes back. Of course. When Carl comes back. <laughs> but the thing is, we had three jersey retirements in the last seven years. If you're the Sens organization, it's not going to be in the... Seven years to me is the minimum before we see another one. Yeah, I mean, unless Craig Anderson comes and works as a goalie coach for the team, there it seems to be if you come back and work for the team, they put your number up there. So that would uh, expedite things for sure. But yes, Brady Kajuk is going to be my locked on player because this is these are the kinds of games where you can't let a, a bad team, a ceremonial night, you can't let that wash over you. They need these points so, so badly. Like they're even though they've won six of the last seven games, Ross, they're not even sniffing that wild card spot yet. And other teams are going to bulk up on the deadline. So you need to be getting those two points. And I, I I know it's still far stretch, but I want this team winning instead of tanking. So these points are very crucial. You can't let a uh, low, you can't play down to your competition in this game. I'm sure it hasn't happened in every game this season when a player's being honored, but the two that come to mind for right away for me is Ryan Miller. Sabres, destroyed yep. the Anaheim Ducks in that game. I'll be at the Anaheim Ducks. I'll be at the Anaheim Ducks. But there's a better example. Are you going to go with Dustin Brown? Dustin Brown, 6 nothing. Kings beat the Pittsburgh Penguins. And the Dustin Brown one is kind of similar to Chris Neal. I mean, obviously, Dustin Brown was a captain and they won cups. Two but, cups. But it was one of those scenarios where every other franchise was like, that's the guy. You're retiring his numbers. Look at his stats. Look at his numbers. Like, it doesn't matter about that. It's about what did they mean to the fans. That's the regard I'm, I'm comparing them to. I like that. No, no, no yeah. I think that's fair. I want to pull up. Uh, give me your lookout player. I got. I want a stat to pull up here. All right. My lookout player is going to be... I'll, I'll go with Max Domi. We already mentioned him here. And... Uh, Ross, you know your team is not doing that great when Max Domi is leading your team in points with 36 points 
in 53 games. He's also tied for leading in goals with 14. Jonathan Taves and Taylor Radish actually are uh, also in that group there. So I'm going to be locked on to Max Domi because I think if if anyone on the Chicago Blackhawks would have reasons to be um, have vengeance and uh, have some bitter feelings on a Chris Neal jersey retirement night, it's the son of Ty Domi because he was probably – well. Depending on no, he was he would have been old enough to be watching those 100%. games and to be knowing what's going on. So he was twenty fourteen draft, I think. Here I've got his uh, I've got his page here. He's probably born so, in ninety six. So he's, tw- he's twenty seven. Yeah, so he's what? born. That's like 96, 96? 95, uh, Not math guys. Credit to me. But that's uh, he would have been uh, old enough to be aware of what's going on. Be like that guy is fighting my dad again. <laughs> yeah. So and they kind of look alike. They look very similar. Yeah. So I think that's someone I'm going to be locked onto. Like imagine, just imagine Brady Kachuk Max Domi fight. Brady beats the wheels off of him and does the the two arm wave like it's beautiful. All right, it's there's beautiful. there's enough fan fiction. Um, what I looked up here, Chris Neal only fought the Chicago Blackhawks twice in his career. That's tied for twenty fourth most. Like again, East West, you didn't expect him to be at the top of the list, but I do find yeah. it interesting with Chicago being the team. And credit to the Senators, I really appreciate this about them that they chose the Anaheim Ducks to honor Wade Redden and the Chicago Blackhawks to honor weird. Chris Neal. Weird, 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 weird. But, I mean, that's just smart. Like, you're not going to do it up against the boss. Oh, wait, they typically beat the Boston Bruins Oops. this season. They got a Monday. <laughs> Watch what you say. In Boston, Family Day Monday. Uh, Second half of back-to-back with travel. Yeah, but, hey, back-to-backs aren't a problem when you've got two experienced, solid goalies like the Ottawa Senators do. Let's get back to Chris Neal. Let's end the show on that. Wait, yeah, I need a lookout player for you. Who plays for Chicago? I mean, there, there's some low-hanging fruit. What, Kane? See how his hips are looking? But Kane is very motivated to play well right now to get traded. Like, you heard his comments when he found out Tarasenko it, was the guy going to New York. It's like when uh, when your ex and you break up and you want to prove that you're okay, he's going to see to break it. He's like, I'm okay without you. Exactly, yeah. And also... We had so much chemistry together, but I'm okay without you. Speaking of exes, Patty Kane wanted to hook up with one of his exes. Imagine him on a line with... Panarin. Oh, I thought you were going to say Nisimov. No, no. <laughs> in in New York. Yeah. Like that that would have been ideal for Patty Kane. So I think he's going to have a, a little thorn in his side and he's going to be playing a little extra good coming up to the trade deadline here. So, I mean, yeah, other than Patrick Kane, and the only reason I picked Domi is because of the Chris Neal yeah, relation course. there. So that's about all we're. Well, no, we're I'll, I'll say Seth Jones because they paid him a ton of money. Like you can mention him in this. What they pay him eight by nine. Yeah, he's dash twenty eight. And season. Seth, don't don't call me Caleb because his brother's also on the same decor. Yeah, true. They're brothers and they're both playing there. But earlier on the season, we know every defenseman that came in the trade rumor mill, the Senators had a sniff at. So that name came out and that contract is awful. But I do want to see how he looks. So I'll say Seth Jones. Okay. Uh, But I really want to talk about Chris Neal, whose jersey is getting retired. Not sure if you heard. Chris Neal, 176 fights in his career. 176 fights, 95 playoff games. The first the first Stanley Cup final playoff home goal. Yep. And they're going to show that clip, and the place is going to go absolutely crazy tonight. It's going to be amazing to see. But I want to ask you this. And I heard Chris Neal on the Cam Jansen podcast with, what's it called? Cam and Strick. Cam and Strick podcast. And he seems to have a pretty decent relationship with Danny Heatley. Okay. Do you think Danny Heatley comes tomorrow? I mean, Danny Heatley has kind of been a mythical creature since he's left hockey. So I have no clue. Although they did get a Danny Heatley video tribute clip for Chris Phillips. So no, quite, for for Wade Redden. Or sorry, Wade Redden. Yes, for Wade Redden. So I think we get a possible. video. Cl- I think we get a video clip from. Yeah, him. he's he's on his boat. You know who so, might be there? Mike Fisher. I think Fisher will for sure be there. Yeah. Fisher, they're like best friends. Exactly. When Neil's mom died, I think Mike play Fisher played a big role in uh, NBA rights. So yeah, I think Mike Fisher's a lock. Okay, let's do it that way then. Who else a lock to, to be there? You think Charo would be there? <sighs> maybe, maybe. I don't know where Charo is these days. Is Boston. he back in Europe or he's he's in? Boston. I think he's in Boston. Okay. 
but I also think that he could be a video tribute, like a video guy. Well, I mean, if if we're going down the list, I mean, we got to say Chris Phillips. Chris Phillips well, will yeah, they work for the there. team. <laughs> I think we could go so far. Chris Kelly, unless wait, is he on the bench in? But he, he is, so he, so won't, he be won't be there. But he would. He would be the kind of guy who would be there in person. Yeah. I think Antoine Vermette could be a guy who would be there in person. Chris Schubert's got to make the flight from no, Germany. Come I don't on, think he Shuby. Will. <laughs> Shuby, get over here. <laughs> we got to talk to Shuby, actually. Patty Laleem. The- Patty Laleem will be there. Okay. Yep. Patty Laleem. I think Patty Laleem will be there. Let us know in the comments, too. Who else will be there? We're naming names now, but like, think of guys who had like Brian McGratton. Yeah. Brian Grattan McGratton should be there. He'll want to celebrate because when he came in the league, Chris Neal was like the guy. And he kind of, I think. I think McGratton will be there in person. That would be great to see him. Yeah, definitely. That would be awesome, man. Think of all the fighters that Chris Neal shared the team with, but how he still took on the top end guys like Matt Cassian, another guy who came to Ottawa, but like they already had Neal as well. Like Carkner. Uh, yeah, but Carkner Carkner's a tough. Like he might I don't think he ever fought Chris Neal, but they'd go toe to toe. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm curious who else. I think there's going to be some surprise, like old school names, because Neil at the start of his career with Ottawa, I st- I think mate, like would Andre Waugh be there? Oh, he kind of took his that'd job. Be great. He kind of took his great. job. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, it, it, it. I mean, that's the thing. Like, if you're an Ottawa Senators fan, especially if you're uh, not a new Ottawa Senators fan, nothing hits like Sens nostalgia. The nostalgia is just so damn good. You know what's awesome? And we can tell you for sure that Mark Mathot's going to be at the game, yep. that Cheryl Pounder's going to be at the game. They're both doing it with TSN. So we're going to make sure to go hi- say hi to them because you and I will be boots on the ground. Not sure if anybody listening is aware of that <laughs> at this point, but we're really looking forward to this. We recorded the night before so we can get this out nice and early and just have an absolute day. So we're going to get a busy day. We're going to get our Shawarma Palace. Yep. We're going to get to the Glebe Central Pub. We're going to set this show up. And depending on the mood and the vibe after the game, there could be a postcast live at the Glebe Central Pub. And that postcast is going to be very interesting. The alkalizer? Is that? The potalizer. The potalizer. <laughs> yeah, the potalizer tests will uh, They will determine. Good. Yeah. <laughs> but number 25 goes to the rafters. The third, fourth number that the Sens have retired. So no other player in franchise history will wear number eight. Number 11, number 25, and on defense, number four. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, that's... uh, The closer it's gotten, the more I've warmed up to it. That's the thing, yeah. I I think originally I I was like, the the Chris's, Philip, and Neil should be Ring of Honor guys, but it just, it feels right having them retired because they played their whole careers in Ottawa. Thousand games. They were, uh, Ross, they were in our wheelhouse of Sens nostalgia. Like, especially you, like, that That was just pure Sens nostalgia, those guys. So, well, Phillips was, what, 95 first overall? And Chris Neal went in the, I think, two, I think 98 draft, six, sixth round. So how many sixth rounders have played a thousand games? I can tell you one. Daniel Alfredson. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But I mean, it's it's obviously I think more impressive. Even like the tough guys like Austin Watson and and guys like their first round picks. Like they have that. He had to grind from such a young age where yep. he knew the only way he was going to make it was to be an absolute menace on the ice. And and man, did he do an awesome job at it. Yeah, Ross. I don't know if you've ever been to Flesherton, Ontario. That's in my neck of the woods, but. It's not exactly a thriving hockey community. So he had to work very hard to get into a position where he could get noticed, play in junior, get drafted. And then it was a quite literally a battle every single game to keep his job. And he battled for over a thousand games. I'm so excited for the video tribute that they're going to yep. put up for him. I'm so excited to hear what his former teammates have to say about him. Alfie, we didn't even mention, will be at the game. Yes, yes. That's a big miss by us. Yes, Guaranteed Alfie, yes. Alfie is at the game. I'd say likely on the ice. Oh, I, I would say it's going to be Phil, like it's going to be the guys who of he's course, joining up of course, there. Of course, yes. Or maybe Frank Finnegan. Uh, but <laughs> In spirit. You look at, uh, at what Neil brought. Like It's just going to be a great night. So let's go out there, Sens fans. Let's celebrate. Let's do what Chris Neal would love to do. And maybe after a goal, we get everyone at the same time to do the nice. Chris Neal Sally and and just uh, celebrate a great career and and just awesome to see. Last before we go, Pilsy, we talked about this yesterday, and the reason why we did 
was because we figured the answer would be today, and we got it. Mad Sogard will start in goal. As fun as it was to argue, this was the right decision. No, I, I, it's it's clear because look, you've you've got two goalies, and Mad Sogard definitely is the top goalie prospect. And this is a point in the season, especially when you've got injuries, you got to see what you have from your top prospects. You got to be able to kind of do a, a sort of like an audit, like how valuable are these guys? When can we expect to see them? How can they handle the stresses of being in the NHL? And I think there's no reason why Mad Sogard shouldn't start this game. He was excellent in that game against Calgary, a big, probably the biggest reason why they were able to stay in that game and ultimately win it. So I think that's a good decision. All right. Well, we'll talk to you at the Glebe Central Pub Ooh. later today. Any final thoughts, Pills? Go, sends. Go. go, go, sends, go. Leave a comment below. Say go, sends, go if you got nothing else to say. <laughs> and we'll see you at the Glebe Central Pub. For today, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast. Your team every day.